I'm Pam Marone, CEO and founder of Marone BioInnovations, a biopesticide company in Davis, California. We discover, develop, market, and manufacture natural products for pest management in agriculture. I am an entomologist by training. I have a bachelor's degree from, in entomology from Cornell University and a PhD in entomology with a, with a specialization in um, integrated pest management from North Carolina State University. My expertise is in biological pesticides or biopesticides. And biopesticides are uh, becoming a major component of pest management systems. Why IPM and orchard crops? Well, today's uh, consumer demands a product that is you know, low or free of chemical pesticides. And the state regulators demand and other regulators demand um, that we don't pollute the water and we don't pollute air. We have products that have low uh, VOCs or volatile organic compounds. And if you are a grower and many are exporting their products to Europe, Europe demands produce, fruit and vegetables and nuts that are lower in pesticide residues than actually what's required in the US. And the supermarket retailers there, driven by the consumer, also um, requires no or low residues. So if you're a grower in California, you better find ways to meet today's requirements for growing crops that's demanded by consumers and exporters and other countries. And how, how are you going to do that and farm profitably at the same time? Well, there's where integrated pest management comes in. IPM in orchard crops has allowed growers to farm profitably, more sustainably, and to d meet today's requirements for sustainable and low residue crops. In addition, IPM has also allowed growers to prevent or delay resistance development. As we know, pests um, are very good at overcoming chemical pesticides, and a lot of the new chemicals on the market today are single site of action, which means they work in just one way, so the insect can mutate once and then overcome them. So there is a much greater risk for pests developing resistance with today's modern chemicals, and therefore, you're going to need integrated pest management to delay or prevent the development of resistance. Um, also, as I mentioned, uh, IPM can also lead to better environmental and worker safety. So if you look at IPM and orchard crops today, there's been a real shift from a chemical intensive program with very toxic chemicals like organophosphates and carbamates to a continual reduction in those types of chemicals being used to less toxic chemicals. And then in the last, say, five to 10 years, then you also see an integration of biological pesticides into the program. So uh, you have an integrated mix of different products, low risk chemicals, biological pesticides, and also cultural practices. IPM isn't just about inputs, pesticides, but it's also about using cultural practices um, to an, an integrated approach to, to have insects get up to a, a certain threshold, economic threshold, and you wait until you use all other means um, of integrated tools before you start spraying. California and the West Coast has seen a very successful integration um, of different tools in IPM programs with the reduction of OPs and carbamates, especially through the use of uh, certain things, uh, tools like mating disruption. Mating disruption, uh, pheromones, is a good example of a biological pesticide. So let me take a step back and define what biological pesticides are, which is my area of expertise. Biological pesticide can be a microorganism, um, so it could be a bacteria or a fungus, from nature that is then fermented like you make wine and beer in big vats and then um, you put you can you can harvest the bacteria or the fungi and then put them um, into uh, jugs just like you would a chemical with proper pre preservatives food grade preservatives and then you spray these bacteria or fungi out on the crop to control insects or uh, plant diseases just like you would a chemical pesticide. But they're uh, very biodegradable and usually complex mode of action so insects don't develop resistance to them. And you can uh, rotate them in 
to IPM programs. So you can, instead of spraying back to back to back chemicals, you can manage resistance and reduce your residues by then rotating a biological microorganism, for example, um, such as Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis, the very original biopesticide, um, in with a chemical, and then you can, uh, as I mentioned, delay resistance and reduce your residues. Biological pesticides can use right up to harvest. So if you have a late infestation or a late disease coming in, you can uh, spray right before harvest and not worry about pesticide residues, which is great for exported crops because a lot of growers do export. The other category of biological pesticides besides microorganisms or microbials are biochemicals. And the EPA and California Department of Pesticide Reg Regulation regulates uh, both microbials and biochemicals called biopesticides. And biochemicals are naturally occurring substances, but they must have a non-toxic mode of action in order to be classified as biopesticides. And the big success in IPM in orchard crops are biochemicals called insect pheromones or mating disruption uh, biochemicals. And these are regulated as biopesticides. It is a major, major category besides microbials that are the reduced risk products that can be used very well in IPM programs. Another advantage of both of the microbials and the biochemicals is that they're also soft on beneficials. Part of IPM is enhancing the beneficial insects, predatory mites, lacewings, lady beetles, and other uh, be beneficial insects in order to keep some of your, your populations in check. And there's been some very successful examples of um, classical biocontrol um, of introducing predators and parasites to control pests, but also um, growers who augment those through um, releases of, those uh, of beneficial insects. So biological pesticides, microbials, and, um, and biochemicals uh, generally are very soft and beneficial, so they are nice to be integrated into IPM programs.